As soon as we went out of sight, we'd floor it and come up and then we'd slow down. So the second year of the 2904, uh, Top Gear showed up and we had learned our lesson from the first year, which meant we were gonna bring some horsepower and a little more room, but mostly horsepower. Because we had the Subaru, and this is not exaggerating, floored for three states. And up in the high plains, we were doing 70 miles an hour. We, we couldn't even break the speed limit because it had no power up there. We're like, we're gonna get, we're gonna get some, some powerful. And one of the great cars I ever ran into during the film car work and stunt work was the Chevy Caprice police package, the 9C1. And its counterpart is the Ford Crown Vic police car. But the Chevy is so much stronger and so much more robust. So we found one um, and we bought it for a thousand bucks or something like that. And we we're like, now how do we make it special? We want to be a little more theatrical about it. And if you watch the different Cannonball Run movies, there's plenty of material, right? And somehow we, there was, in the Cannonball Run 2, they had the um, military limousine that they were riding around it. And we're like, let's make a military car. So we take it over, um, and this is only a couple days before we left. So the paint was still wet. We had it completely painted. And that was in the budget. Um, got this ch super cheap paint job. We painted it olive green and we made up some vinyl stickers and it had a star on each door. We took the license plate off. We put a star where the license plate was. We put what looked like military badging. So it all said 2904 all over it as the vehicle number. And um, it, was, it was spot on. It, it looked great because it had the stock wheels on it and it just looked sharp. And it was quick because the 9C1s have the LT1 in them, which is over 260 horsepower and a lot of torque. And it's got cop brakes and the cop suspension and everything the Blues Brothers could ever want. And it was perfect. Um, you know, designed to run at very high speeds for long periods of time. So we set off in that and we were all wearing military outfits and of different eras. I had borrowed my dad's jacket. He, I was a Green Beret, so I had like a, a field jacket on from, you know, 1960s. My brother, who was in the military, who didn't want anybody to know, like he was, I think he was a captain at the time. He's in his gear and our friend uh, from Australia was in uh, his gear. And so off we go and we're tearing, we tear through Pennsylvania and the car is running great. And we're getting into Ohio and Ohio was the, the, you know, the boogeyman state for speeding. Um, if you look at all the old books, then you're like, oh yeah, everybody got in trouble in Ohio. So you're always a little careful. Now we're, f Ohio has these lovely rolling hills in one chunk of it. And we're rolling up and down, up and down. As we come up, we see taillights. We're like, oh, yeah, you know. And we see taillights and a little bit maybe reflective material, which is always the giveaway for a police car, right? And we come up again and we're, as we get closer, we're getting slower and slower and slower. And we're using the dips to, as soon as we went out of sight, we'd floor it and come up and then we'd slow down. So we're just closing the distance, which it was a cop and he knew what we were doing, right? And we finally got close enough and we saw the badging on the back. So at that point, it's very like Han Solo, like, fly casual, right? Like, whatever that means. So like, we're going, I'm driving, sitting up. And we all had our hair cut super tight and uh, he's in front of us. And we're both in the slow lane and he pulls over to the passing lane and starts slowing down. And he comes up right next to us and we're, you know, two miles over the speed limit. <laughs> and you know, he's looking at you, right? So I just like, I turn over and I look at him and I go, let me get back to drive. <laughs> and he pulls, slowly pulls behind us like three quarters and he hits us with the spotlight, but not the rollers, just the spotlight to look at the car. He turns it off, he comes up next to me again, and I'm looking over, I'm like, you know, and trying to pretend we're having a casual conversation among soldiers, and he comes behind us again, and I'm like, oh, that's it, we're, we're so done. And he comes up really close behind us, and then takes the exit. And I'm like, 
oh my gosh. And all you, could, you, could, you knew the subtext of what was going on. He's like, I don't even want to know what this is about. He's like, I'm not even pulling this over. Like, no license plate, just a star on the door. Like, we're driving the general around or something. And it was a ploy which totally worked. And we, did, we actually only got pulled over once again in Wyoming. Um, he didn't buy the act at all. In fact, we had to explain to him that we were taking a film car from New York to San Francisco for a film shoot because he was wondering why the heck we were driving a fake army vehicle. And luckily I had my, my film car, business card. I'm like, oh, we're just transporting a vehicle. And we thought it'd be a lot of fun to dress in costume because, you know, we're wacky guys from New York and California. And that worked out great. <laughs>